So a new student today, this is Bruce. I had a consultation with his owner um, all way back last year uh, with Bruce and his, his other um, buddy who he lives with, Zeus, who's a Rottweiler. And uh, basically, what happens if you have a house move or a relationship breakdown or an illness or if somebody passes away and you, you have grief to deal with? It's an emotional imbalance. Um, it's a higher state of mind for everybody to be in the energy is a little bit frazzled. Dogs pick up on that and they sometimes start to act out because of it. So the owner has recently moved house and Bruce has started to get a little bit more reactive towards other dogs and a men. And we have a, a jogger coming up ahead. So that's quite good. So I'll move over here a little bit. Okay. So morning. Oh, I didn't even look at that, that's good. So, um, yeah, today really is about building Bruce's confidence. What's happened on one of the walks is a dog has run out of um, a house and come running at Bruce and had a go at him. And Bruce stood his ground, but he didn't fight back as such. He had to go back, but he didn't fight. Um, this is not aggressive. He's, he's just reactive as in, oh, God, what do I do? You know, a little bit unsure. So uh, he's, he's quite a gentle soul. Um... But as most staffies are, he's sensitive. So because he's sensitive, he will be quick to react. And uh, that's what happened there. So since then, especially on sort of tarmac pavement walks, he's been even more reactive with other dogs, to the point where it's difficult to hold him on the lead. And she's been using the slip lead, but what happens with a strong dog, it is difficult to get that give and take. And we have to have the release part um, with the technique, or the dog doesn't learn anything. Um, never solidly hold. We've got to have give and take. And it's always an upwards movement with the hand. You never pull backwards. So uh, it's with that. Okay, always give and take. With a strong dog, you've got to be really quite jerky and firm about it. And if you are hesitant at all or, uh, you know, worried at all, that's the communication that goes through to the dog. And the lead, you know, doesn't do the right job basically then so what can happen is it can slip down onto the throat area so when it's on the throat area of the dog that's a sensitive restrictive area for the dog it's a vulnerable area so the dog pulls more once that lead comes down from the just underneath the jawbone top of the ears once it comes down just a little bit to the throat area the dog will get stronger and then you can't get that clear give and take that you need okay so I've got him on the Gencon today now the Gen Con, unlike the Holty, the nose piece of the Gen Con only actually comes into play when you have to be firm with the lead. So the lead sits around the back of the ears, underneath the jaw, and then to the nose. But the nose area stays relaxed until you have to be really firm with the lead. So you have the whole control of the head, and it's a much gentler, less stressful communication if you have a strong dog and you, you panic a bit you know which we do that's that's what happens so this is Bruce on the Gen Con today and uh, yeah to begin with he's rubbing his nose along the floor it feels strange but I know it doesn't hurt and uh, and it's still the same give and take with that lead yep always give and take upwards never pull back so we passed a few dogs this morning and he's tense he looks doesn't bark or lunge he's not that sort um, but he's, he's clearly uncomfortable and on edge. So we're going to build confidence today. And it'll just be me and him this morning. Lots of different places, lots of different dogs, lots of lead work. And then this afternoon, he'll be with my boys and uh, he'll get to learn from them. Okay, so as Bruce.